Good morning, church family, Pastor Ross here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Last Sunday evening, we ran a Q&A at our church, asking the question, does the Bible say anything about climate change? In prep for that, I read an article which was the top four biblical reasons not to panic about climate change. It was written by Avery Foley back in February this year. In our news these days, we create panic amongst the world's people by the sorts of headlines that sell newspapers. Australian fire, fires are a prelude to our climate suffering goes one. Another one, climate crisis. January 2020 was the warmest since our records began. And those sorts of headlines stir fear and anxiety and even panic within the readers of those particular newspapers. But for us as Christians, God's word should always be our starting point. We need to look at scripture and line up our emotions with that. Regardless of real or perceived circumstances, our lives should never be characterised by fear, dread or anxiety. Let me tell you a couple of those reasons today and then next week we'll share a couple more. The first reason that we, we know in our head but we need to get into our heart is that no matter what happens, God is ultimately in control. He's sovereign over everything. In Psalm 115, the psalmist says, Our God is in the heavens and he does as he wishes. He is, he's sovereign over everything, even over the weather. And in Psalm 148, he says, Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him. God's in control. Now, we may be able to impact our environment, but we're not the be-all and end-all of what happens here on earth. Because as Christians, we acknowledge and believe that, that God is. That he's revealed what the end will be when he will judge the earth with fire and when he creates a new heaven and a new earth. Let me read from 2 Peter chapter 3, from verse 9. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve punishment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, he goes on, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we're looking forward to the new heavens and new earth that he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. Now, the fact that everything is going to be destroyed shouldn't give us a cavalier attitude towards the environment in which we're, we're brought up in these days. In scripture, we see this balance over responsibility and God's sovereignty, our responsibility and God's sovereignty. They go together. We have this obligation to exercise dominion over God's creation as his stewards who've been made in his image. And so God is in charge. The second thing I want to mention is that God has commanded us not to be afraid. We shouldn't fear about the headlines of the newspapers because God is in charge and he has commanded us to not be afraid because he's with us. The Bible commands us over 365 times not to be afraid. And so we probably should pay attention to something that's repeated that many times. The news headlines are filled with reasons to fear. War, natural disasters, global pandemic fears, uncontrollable climate change and many more things. We've got many reasons to fear just as the original audience did that Peter was speaking to. Yet God still commands each one of us to fear not because he is in control. Let me pray with you. Almighty God, we acknowledge your awesome power. We acknowledge your, your authority, your ability to do what you purpose to do. 
We acknowledge the fact that you're Lord over everything, whether it be um, climate change, whether it be over ourselves, whether it be over the weather or whatever. You're there in, in your power and authority as our Lord. And so we, we continue to ask you to, to protect and, and comfort us in the situations that we find ourselves. Help us to be the people of God that you want us to be, confident in your power and authority and the ability that you have to do what you have purposed to do. We need to rest and relax in your arms. And we ask that you would show us how to do that. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God and you talk to him. Let him talk to back to you as you read the Bible. And when he does speak, make sure you trust and obey. That's what it's about. Keep looking for opportunities to bless other people through your understanding of Christian faith. And we'll see you soon.